In this video, we're going to look at the new features added to Adobe Camera Raw 16.3. So we're going to open this image as a filter in Camera Raw from Photoshop. So we're going to choose the Filter menu and then choose Camera Raw Filter. Camera Raw will pop up and you can see the version I have is 16.3.1. So if you have the new 16.3, there's a new update which just has some bug fixes in it. Let's look at the new features added in 16.3. The first one we're going to do is generate a remove. So if you go down to the eraser tool and we click on the eraser tool, you'll see now it's been renamed to remove and there's three different tools. So here's the regular tools, but the eraser now has two options underneath there. Use generative AI or object aware. Notice this is an early access, which means it's sort of like beta, but within the app. So it could change. So if we have these two options turned off, this will work just like the remove tool did in the past. It will use other parts of the image to just kind of patch it and remove them. If we turn on generative AI, so what it's going to do is it's going to use Adobe Firefly, same one that's in Photoshop, to remove it. If I turn object aware on, what it's going to do is it's going to try and recognize those objects and make it easier. So I can do what's known as a scribble select, where I just roughly select over this thing and then I release. It will do its best to kind of select it. Obviously, it's not perfect, but now it takes us into the next window, which is refine. And this is where we can clean this up. So I can just paint over the top. And here's a little tip. If I want to paint from the top to the bottom in a straight line, click at the top, hold the shift key down, position the cursor where you want to go, click and now we'll just fill that up. So this is really good for straight lines. We'll do it on here. Let's go a little bit over there. And let's also just paint over this area. What you want to do is make sure you completely cover up the areas you want to remove. Now we've gone over in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to subtract. And now we can just paint over some of the areas that we don't want to remove, such as that. And maybe a little bit in the background. I'm just going to do that select thing again where I click, hold down the shift key, and then click. And all I'm doing is I'm just telling it, hey, I don't want to remove this area in the middle there. All right, that's good enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to hit apply and let it do its thing. And you'll notice that it actually did a really good job of removing that background. Now we can go through the variations. So there's our second variation or our third variation. I like number two or three better because if I look at number one, see how the tree just kind of falls off. That's not really working. But if we go there, it kind of matches. So I'm going to go for the second variation. And if you're getting any value out of this video, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my videos. So that's the basics of the first feature, remove. And I did a more in-depth tutorial last week. Um, I used Lightroom. And the develop module in Lightroom is pretty identical to Camera Raw. So those tutorials and this tutorial will work on both. Let's move to the next new feature. We're going to go to the adjustment tool and we're going to go down to the lens blur. Now lens blur was introduced last year, but now it notice it's not early access anymore. It is now fully fledged and it's got some nice updates in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to choose apply. And when I choose apply, what happens is it analyzes the image and it tries to determine what's the foreground and what is the background. And then it will build a depth map. All of this will make sense in a moment. But right now we don't really see much of a difference. So why don't we grab this little tool here, this little target, and we're going to click at the front. And now we're telling it this area here, the very front of the train is the area that I want to be sharp and in focus. Notice as I did that, you could start to see more of the blur in the background. And if we want, we can adjust the blur amount. So what I'll generally do is I'll overdo the blur amount. So it's really obvious what I'm working on. And then once I've done all my refinements and everything, I'll just pull it back. All right, so let's look at the details in here. So the first thing we're looking at is the focus range. And one of the things you'll notice that the added is a near and far on there now. And as I move this, you'll see numbers will appear. So here's an interesting thing. So as we slide across here, notice we put the in focus area to the background instead of the foreground. Let me just bring it back the other way. 
And here's another interesting thing. And the reason I chose this train is it's going to illustrate it really well. So if I adjust this handle here, notice we can adjust the focal plane, giving it a more narrow depth of field. Let's just click on the front here. The narrow depth of field means it's a smaller area in focus on something like a lens, you know, such as a 1.4 or 1.8 or even a, a 2.8, a very kind of large aperture. As we separate this out, now notice how more of this starts to come in focus. And this is like changing our f-stop to something like a, you know, if we go all the way here to something like an f11. And as I change it, notice how you can see that I think this train image just really illustrates it well of how we're changing that focal plane. And notice the numbers will appear here to show us where we are. All right, let's look at some of the other options because I'm looking at this right now and part of this tree here is blurry. Some of it's sharp and it doesn't quite look right. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose visualize depth. So when we turn on visualize depth, it's showing us the depth map. This is something that's generated by Camera Raw that uses AI to simulate how close or how far away things are from the camera. The lighter areas are closer to the camera and these darker areas are further away. And based on that, it applies the blur. So we can see some areas that are off a little bit. So what we want to do is we can use the refinements here. We can focus or we can blur. So if we want to bring things closer to us, we're bringing them into focus. If we want to push things further away, we're pushing them in, into the blur. So let's bring some things closer to us. So we're going to choose the focus option and now we get a brush. And if we look at these trees, let me just turn it off quickly. Notice how some of these are sharp and some of these are blurry. In fact, if they're equal or closer to this area, the front of the train, the ones very close to us could be blurry, but the ones back here need to be sharp. Let's turn visualize depth back on again. And now we can paint over these areas. Notice as I'm painting, it's selecting the edges and that's because I have auto mask turned on. So let's just paint over here. And we're going to select these. Great. If we want to bring them closer or further away, we can do that by the focus amount. As I push the focus amount to the left, it makes them darker, pushing them further away. As I bring it to the right, it lightens them and brings them closer to us. So let's have a look at this. If we take the visualized depth off, look at this. The trees are nice and sharp now where they should be. And you can go through and you can refine this as much as you want. All right, so maybe this part here I need to bring forward a little bit, but I don't want to use the same settings I used on the tree. So what I can do is just hit the plus and now it will create a new one and I can paint in this area. And now if I change this focus amount, notice this, I can independently change this now. Now these don't have to be perfect. Let me show you here. See that's working quite nicely. Sometimes these reflective areas can struggle a little bit, but I think that looks pretty good. So let's look at the blur. The blur uses different types of bouquets and these bouquets simulate the shapes of different apertures. So in another tutorial, I've gone more in depth on what each of one of these simulates, but let me just show you. See, as we change them, see how the bouquet changes and the specular areas are definitely going to show up. And this is good when you're working in, you know, darker scenes and you've got lights in the background, but these specular highlights will show up and notice how they take on the shape of the aperture. And it also changes the shape of the background blur. Now this has been enhanced in the newest update to make them look more realistic. Now we can boost this bouquet. If we increase it, we get more of it. If we decrease it, we get less of it. So let's just get a little bit. I'm looking at this area here and I just want that to look quite realistic. So let's just bring it up a little bit. So the last thing we would do now is we would just take the blur amount and we would bring it at a more you know, more kind of believable level. Like I'm thinking around about here somewhere. There's our before, there's our after, and you can see it's actually quite realistic now. Now, another thing we're mentioning on here is there's under the presets, we have adaptive presets, which 
come with camera raw and we could apply these and notice as I'm rolling over you can kind of see the effect they're having on it we can also create our own so if you're creating a preset now we can actually include lens blur as one of those attributes inside of our preset and this will become an adaptive preset an adaptive preset means that it changes for the photo so what it will do is it'll detect the subject and every subject that's detected will be different on every photo but the blur and the other settings you know the bokeh settings and all those will be applied uh, according to that preset another new feature i want to look at is content credentials so let's go to the save options up here you want to make sure this is in jpeg because it's the only format that's supported right now we can click on apply content credentials so this will do a couple of things this will enable you to embed your credits into the photo so if this photo gets shared around your credits are still going to be there now this goes a little bit deeper than just attaching metadata to a file so we could actually upload this to the cloud so if someone else had this image it will actually recognize the image and the other thing it does is it is part of the content authenticity initiative that Adobe is doing. And this is letting people know if an image is real, if it's been edited, if it has AI. And it's a way that people can trust the photos that they look at, as well as protecting your rights as a creator. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to give my producer to myself. And notice we can do edits and activity if i turn that off it's just going to save it but we want to turn that on so that will actually save the edits that we have done so people will know so we have some options here we can publish to the credentials cloud this will make a smaller file size and it will upload those credentials to the cloud or we can attach it to the file which will not put it on the cloud but it will save it to your file that you're saving locally or we can do both where we attach it to the cloud as well as saving it locally. So why don't we do that? And this is an early access, so that means it's still being worked on, of course. And we'll want to set the location, which we're going to do here. I'm going to put this to the desktop. And of course, you can rename the file or whatever you like. So I'm just going to hit save. And let's click OK to get out of Camera Raw. And if you want to check an image, go to contentcredentials.org forward slash verify. And this is in conjunction with a number of different companies, uh, several hundred right now. I'm going to grab the image that we just worked on. And I'm going to drag it in here. Notice it will upload it. And if we want to look at the credentials, we go over here. And we can see on June the 5th, which is today's date, it created this content credential. And this tells us that AI was used. And if we go down here, we can see... This was edited in Camera Raw 16.3.1. And the AI tool used was Adobe Firefly. What did we do with it? Well, we did drawing edits, which was basically removing that background there. And then we did other edits, which would be blurring the background, I'm pretty sure. So this is letting people know that this image was edited and also we were using AI on there. So there's a kind of a discussion going on right now where one of the short fallings of this is sometimes when we're just editing an image and doing some minor things with AI, it can give the impression that larger parts of the image were generated with AI, whereas they were actually the photo. But in time, you know, obviously this is going to become refined and it's going to get better and more accurate. So hopefully you found this video useful and you learned something new. If you did, drop a comment underneath and let me know. And if you want to go a bit deeper, check out my recent video I did here on the new features in Lightroom Classic, which are the same features that are in Camera Raw. So it works both ways. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my videos. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.